Now, augmented learning environments are different to virtual learning environments. Uh, virtual learning environments has been co-opted to mean learning management systems and similar tools. Augmented learning environments incorporate concepts such as virtual reality, augmented reality, um, what's called extended reality, and uh, mixed reality. Um, extended reality combines virtual reality or mind with virtual worlds, we use the term augmented learning environments. Um, extended reality plus virtual worlds is augmented learning environments. So first thing we have to understand is the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality. Virtual reality is where you put on a headset or you go into a space that's surrounded by screens and you only experience digital objects. So you look out on a virtual um, environment and you may see a virtual castle or a virtual classroom. But everything you see is generated by the computer. Augmented reality is somewhat different. Again, you wear a headset or um, eyeglasses, but you can see through the visor. Or in some cases, you can, there are cameras on the outside of the, the headset that allow you to see the real world as well as the virtual world. And that's what differentiates augmented reality from virtual reality. In augmented reality, you still see digital objects, but you also see the real world. And what this means is that we can superimpose digital objects onto the real world. So if I'm looking at a car, I might have the computer with the cameras and the headset might identify the, the type of car it is and then give it a label so that I can see digitally a label superimposed over the vehicle. Or I might decide, I'm in a car yard and choosing between cars and I might say, oh, okay, that's quite a nice car, but I'd really like to see what it would look like if it was blue. And so the augmented reality software would then take the image that it's seeing of the car in real life, in video, and then superimpose the color blue over that. So it would look as though it's a blue car, even though in reality, you might be looking at a red car. So this is the idea of augmented reality. We are superimposing digital objects into the real world. Another example is going into a, um, a or let's say a dress shop and putting on various dresses, but you, there might only be a certain selection available. But we could also use the cameras and digital objects to superimpose virtual clothing onto ourselves and to see how that might look. Um, similar things are done in showrooms where you can go in and looking at your own um, lounge room, you could put a, a virtual, a digital um, couch and see what that would look like. You can put some digital curtains up and see what different types of curtains might look like in your home. So when you're buying objects, obviously then you can um, make choices in a more contextualized way. So there's lots and lots of different applications around virtual reality and augmented reality. Both require hardware. Now that said, uh, mobile phones, where you can hold the screen up to your face and using the cameras on the other side of the phone, it will see the world and on the screen in front of you, it will digitally superimpose some digital data on top of the image of the world that you're looking at. So some augmented reality can be done on mobile devices. Some virtual reality can also be done on mobile devices where we've got some cheap headsets that we can put our mobile phones into and use the mobile phone screen as our window onto the world. And then again, we're only seeing digital objects then on the screen. But as we turn our head, it'll change what we're looking at. Okay, so there's a few key players in this space of um, augmented, augmented learning environments or extended reality. Um, probably the most commonly referred to one at the moment is Meta. Uh, this is where Facebook has decided to transform itself from a social media platform 
into a virtual and augmented reality platform. So quite a big decision, a very brave one. Um, and it started through the purchase of the Oculus Rift headsets, which were released as a Kickstarter a few years ago and proved very successful very quickly. And the founder of Facebook decided that that was a really great idea and that's where they would the direction of the internet would be going where we would all be experiencing the internet through a augmented learning or an augmented space. Um, now Google was also one of the early players in this space and they developed some very low cost uh, virtual reality headsets made out of cardboard uh, but you could put your mobile phone in and strap them onto your head and use as virtual reality um, headsets and that because of their low cost were very popular in schools and that was being used for quite a while but then eventually Google decided that it wasn't a space they wanted to continue in. Uh, most of their revenue was being generated by people using apps and um, searching for things and, and doing that and they found that people didn't tend to do that as much in the virtual environment and it was more difficult to monetize the experience so they've taken a step away from that aspect of augmented reality and virtual reality but they are staying in some elements particularly around the use of software um, they've got a lot of investment in tools such as google earth and google maps which you can put on a headset and move around um, on the google maps and the google earth environment and also through the use of google lens where you can use your device to take photos of things and have digital information about those appear on your screen. So part of this was a bit of a backlash to an attempt Google made to develop um, consumer glasses, augmented reality glasses called Google Glass. Uh, but it was probably a little bit too early and it had quite a cultural backlash where people were um, essentially mocked Google for going down this path. And while it was quite advanced technology for the time, uh, it, it caused a lot of problems for Google as a company. And so they decided to withdraw from that space. They still do make Google Glass, but it's for high-end training purposes. Um, similar to Microsoft. Microsoft also is in this space, but they have tended to focus on augmented reality through their product, the HoloLens. Uh, but again, they're, at the moment, they're focusing on high-end training and high-cost devices. Um, so they cost at least sort of $3,000 each. So it's somewhat out of the range of most consumers. But it is being effectively used in training environments. And they are working on integrating it in with their social media and virtual learning and, or virtual communication platforms, particularly Teams. And if that happens, particularly if they also integrate it in with Skype, then it may transition to a commercial product, which will make it more open to use in more wide, wide, widespread use in education. Of course, the price will come down dramatically and it will then be more available. So the final one, the final one of the major companies is Apple. And Apple has been rumored to be developed being some augmented reality glasses for a number of years now and it's expected that, that will be released this year um, indeed it could be any month now so that again will likely um, supercharge the whole uh, engagement with um, augmented learning environments because the Apple tools will tend to be while well, they'll still be high cost uh, being Apple they'll be very much aimed towards consumers and their products do tend to gain a lot of traction very quickly uh, because of the quality and the usability of their tools, particularly in the interoperability with them with other tools that they have, such as their mobile phones, their desktops, laptops and all the rest. So there could be again a big surge of interest in augmented reality and virtual reality with the introduction of the Apple um, glasses. So while these tools allow us to do a lot of things, um, 
there's a lot of games available. Um, there are a range of learning experiences, web browsers, and um, looking at 360 degree video. We also have a set of tools called virtual worlds. Now these are environments that you use with virtual reality. There's some that are looking at incorporating augmented reality, but predominantly virtual reality. And you go into these virtual worlds and you move about within them and you communicate with others. There can be dozens, if not hundreds of others within the virtual world that you interact with and you move around and you experience various things. So the most popular of these has been Second Life, which has been around for um, a couple of decades now and was very, very popular. Uh, probably about 10 years ago, it reached its peak of popularity and then things died away again. Um, it wasn't until the introduction of the Oculus virtual reality headsets and then the acquisition by Meta um, that reinvigorated interest in virtual environments again. Uh, but Second Life has sustained itself. It's still used by many tens of thousands of people every day. And it's certainly probably the largest of the virtual spaces that are available for use. It's not by any means though the only one. There are, in, are indeed hundreds of virtual environments. Most of them will only exist for a short period of time before they disappear. And indeed, only in the last couple of weeks, um, we've seen the loss of two of the major platforms in virtual environments. So things change relatively quickly in this space. There's a lot of startups, a lot of failures, but there's still a lot of exploration into what may be able to be achieved, particularly around the use of virtual learning environments, sorry, augmented learning environments, for education. So one space that has been particularly popular in uh, school education has been co-spaces. So this is an environment where you can create objects relatively easily and build reasonably small learning environments that students can uh, participate in and they can participate as groups and communicate with one another and do various activities within these constructed spaces. And by the name of the, uh, the tool, CoSpaces, students can also create their own um, environments. And that's one of the most powerful pedagogical uses where students create um, the environment themselves. So if they're reading a book, they can create the virtual environment of that book, and then they can all go along and go into that virtual space and act out the characters in the setting that they've created for that story. Um, you can also have 360 degree tours where using 360 degree video, uh, say of the Barrier Reef or the pyramids or of the International Space Station, students can put on their headsets and feel as though they're actually in that space, being able to look around and move through that environment um, in a 360 degree video. There's also the idea of virtual exhibitions and virtual classrooms where you can set up a whole lot of experiences that students can go into these spaces and interact with these activities or often their posters or readings that they explore. And then we can also incorporate games and simulations where we may build a virtual space of a heart and the students can make their way through the heart identifying the various parts. Um, so there's a whole range of different uh, simulations and virtual experiences that can be used to support education. Now I've provided you with two uh, of these spaces that you can interact with. Uh, one, the island from the story, The Lord of the Flies, where a group of children are shipwrecked on an island and they devolve into a, their own little society and that can be then acted out by participants in the virtual space, moving around and forming gangs and going around and doing various activities. And the other is a Roman villa. So teaching students about how Romans lived um, and the types of houses they lived in, where students can move around and click on various objects and see what those objects are used for as a, um, a learning activity. 
So the idea of this is to think about your hybrid learning activity. How might it be used in a virtual, um, virtual reality space or an augmented reality space? Or an, how could it be utilized in an augmented learning way? So think about that and we'll discuss that in this tutorial.